I was always very prideful on having that indigeneity. Um, the, uh, the fascinating thing about my um, ancestry is that a lot was hidden. So they hid it underneath the carpet. They were, a lot of people were embarrassed about that, and I was always very prideful. I remember my grandfather gave my brother a vest, and it was all beaded. It was probably, you know, over 200-year-old vest, and I played in the forest, and there's probably beads in the forest. Because I, I would play cowboys and Indians with my friends, a uh, small group of friends. And I'd always say, I'm the Indian because I really am. <laughs> and of course, I know that's not the appropriate name, but um, throughout the, um, that thing is that um, I, it, it, there was a lot of racism as well by just admitting that. Um, I was very dark skinned, dark toned when I was little. And um, so much so that I went over to a friend's house, which there was, we lived out in an acreage and friends were very far, few between. between. And one of the lady, one of the kids living in the neighborhood invited me over to her home. And we went over to her home and we were playing and her mother called her in and said, do not play with her for she's a dirty little Indian. And ever since that, I was very angry and very upset and hurt. And I told my mother what had happened. And she says, never play with that kid again. So I was very quiet and reclusive um, just because I was in a very small school. I went to Ministic school. And what really saved me is that um, some of the teachers really saw that I was hurt because the girl would gang up on me with the other girls. So I didn't have a lot of friends. And my sister and my brother and family were my good friends. And uh, the teacher said, you can stay inside at recess and draw. So I did. And essentially, I would saw my mother many nights paint. And um, she would make paintings just to get a little bit of extra income. So that maintained the fascination with art. So it was a combination. Art is what creates a sense of calm for me and always has since I was a child. You know, like I graduated a lot of years ago. And um, so I've been at it for probably 25 plus years. <laughs> and um, do I make money at it? Um, when you become an artist, the goal isn't, the end goal isn't to become insanely rich. Some folks are. It's really a labor of love. When, when I make the work, I'm sitting in my studio, it provides the state of calm. I smudge daily to make that bridge, that connection with the land, to do that story. Um, because essentially when I make a piece of art, it is very personal. It's a personal connection about my family and my land and, and the landscapes that my ancestors came from. So it really is an interesting journey. To make money to survive as an artist, I must say that there's project to, as a project-based artist, your survival is dependent on the grants that you write and the partnerships that you make to move your artwork forward. That's the essential part of making it a job. The success rate is very difficult. The only few survive. Even for my graduating class, there might not be a whole, a small, small handful. And I looked at the photograph and there was... I don't know, over 100 plus people that graduated. So just a small handful of artists that still make and create, and that's their job. Some of the artists end up moving into other parts, other parts of the field of artists. They become professors. They become, you know, I have some colleagues that have gone so far as be becoming artists working for Disney. 
like really successful. Like, I don't know what they make, but I'm sure they make a lot more than me for sure. <laughs> but, um, and then other folks, you know, in the movie biz or other folks here that, um, again, they're like me and they move from project to project. They, they're public artists or they do public art. So the field of art is very big. Without the practice of artists in our culture, it would be a very dull place of where we live. And I often mention to other folks um, that think, okay, well, art's not really a job. And I'm like, well, do you like going to Disney? And do you like going to those theme parks? Do you like to watch movies? Do you like to walk around downtown and see beautiful art? Uh, you know, there's, or if you look in history, you go downtown to the museum. Um, all these places talk about the artists themselves, which carved out culture. I picked some work for Alex Janvier to be part of the exhibition. So I was quite tickled to be uh, have him being a part of the exhibition. It was quite a great honor, and uh, he had al allowed that exhibition contribution because it was uh, because he's family. And he said that, um, so I was very honored about that. And the piece that he exhibited with the exhibition was a plain to air sketches that he did out in Primrose. And um, it's actually called, and this is, forgive me if I've said it wrong, called Atui, which means lots of fish in Dene. And it's called Primrose. Uh, so there's a lot of history with Primrose and the land being taken away with the Indigenous peoples because um, the surrounding re reserves, which is the Canoe Lake Reservation and the Heart Lake Reserve, they relied on Primrose for going to the land to harvest big game in the winter. And my grandfather remembers hunting up there and, you know, during the dirty 30s, which um, people may not know, but a lot of people starved. But up north, the people knew how to live off of the land mm -hmm. and they never starved. They always had full bellies because they knew the land. Well, that, you know, that land was taken away from them in the 50s from our government. So they turned it into their own crown land and they turned it into a bombing range. And uh, through the bombing range, it has uh, mutilated the landscape many times over. And then, of course, another aspect to not just bombing it, uh, there's rich oil and gas deposits up there. And um, so that's another thing. Part of Industry Canada has allowed them to go into that landscape and take the oil. Um, so when I was visiting with Alex, his daughter, Jill Janvier, showed me pictures of them going, the reserve and the elders going into the land and showed me photos of the fish with all their cancers inside. So these mutilated fish of the guts of inside the fish. And it's graphic and horrifying that they did that to the land because that land had saved so many families. It has taken me many years for me to address truth and reconciliation. A lot of that has to do with the fact that A, my mother has admitted that she has been a residential school survivor. Through the recent stories of finding the babies that are being uncovered and through a group that I've been involved with, which is the Wakotuan Society of Cancer and Residential School Survivors, through those women and their stories, my mother started to have memories and they're not pretty. None of those stories are pretty. And the, real, the realization of that is that these women and what they held on to is, it's sad. I mean, it's a difficult road to journey.
And, you know, it makes a lot of sense in my lifetime as seeing my mother as to her, her own struggles and uh, questions that were not answered. And as an artist, I can, I can resolve some of that hurt and pain within my own art, but others can't. So it's a difficult road that we all have to travel together. And when you talk about the land, the land itself, like this is within our own lifetime that we have to conserve it. We're already having so many problems. They're killing off trees. They're killing off our marshland with the amount of marshland and how much they can actually affect the, the um, ozone layer. They can help filter out all the, the bad air. Mm -hmm. We're just killing it off. And at what sacrifice do we have for the loss of digging into our land through colonization to what is now? So there's a huge journey that, you know, with the, the red lines that you see in my work that talk a lot about that. Those are bloodlines. Those are maternal sources of energy within the landscapes that there's there's loss, there's pride, there's culture itself all hidden within the work.